That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about The Amusement Park, directed by George A. Romero, which was actually filmed 46 odd years ago uh, and uh, was a project that was commissioned by the Lutheran Society uh, that has been rediscovered uh, and is being released courtesy of Shudder June 8, 2021. This was an interesting little thing. Uh, it's like 54 minutes long. Mm -hmm. More on there, yeah. It's basically a PSA for, like, to bring awareness about elder abuse and ageism. It, and it's, it's done. Yeah, it's funny. Like, you can tell what it was meant to be. Uh, I don't know if it really succeeds with that. <laughs> Okay, basically it opens with a gentleman talking about like the importance of like acknowledging that there's this issue with elder abuse and ageism and that like what you're about to see is sort of like an example of that and the metaphor that they're using is an amusement park. So sort of like these elder people walking around in the chaos of this amusement park and how they're treated. So it focuses on one man. Uh, played by Lincoln Mazel, who uh, was in George A. Romero, Ro George A. Romero's Martin, and he introduces it, uh, the film. Uh, he's saying he's about to turn 70, or he's going to turn 71, and this is about the lack of compassion from the younger generation, and to think that while you're watching it, that one day you will be old as well. And he's dressed like Colonel Sanders, walking around this amusement park, trying to enjoy himself when it's just a series of events that sort of belittle him or abuse him. That, that sh are trying to showcase his disorientation, uh, but it ends up being this kind of Kafkaesque nightmare in a way that is very fitting with Romero's uh, prize motifs. Okay, so the term like nightmare and then the description I read about how it's this extreme violent thing, it's not all that. No. It's really not. There, I mean, it's like people yell at him, call him stupid, push him out of the way. There's scenes where, like, just generally being, like, not uh, acknowledged. But there's no, like, extreme violence or... No, I wrote down people... His interactions are with people that are just inherently dismissive or charlatans. Right. So I think that was a little disappointing knowing that it was... Just, just the way it was described and hearing even you say Nightmare and then knowing who made it. I was thinking it was going to be, like, some crazy weird shit. And it is weird in the sense that it's just, like... <laughs> you know, you it looks kind of crazy, and the audio is a little off because there's a lot of dubbing, but it's not extreme Cause, in any way. Because after the introduction, we see a beat up looking version of Mazel with like a patch on his forehead, and then a crisp version of him comes, walks out this door, and interacts with himself, and says he's gonna go outside. And the the beat up version says there is no outside, and then he walks out the door into this amusement park, and then it ends up back in a loop with that. So the story in the amusement park starts with a bunch of people in line attempting to like pawn antiques. And or buy tickets. Or buy tickets. But you can, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot going on. But then we see like people being offered very little for their antiques. But ultimately we get to the main guy, Lincoln, and he um, is attempting to buy tickets. And the man is like, well, how much do you want? Well, you know, my budget and this, and the, the cashier is very impatient with him. And then finally like, hands him the tickets, and Lincoln's off to ride rides, buy food. I think probably the most effective scene for me is there's a bumper car scene. That's set up with a couple that is taking a vision test, to, to, like you would see at the DMV. And yeah, they're forced to take a vision test, and the husband fails. And, he's, and you must be a passenger from now on, and his documents are stamped, and then you realize it's <laughs> to ride the bumper cars. And then uh, George Romero's in this scene he's one of the drivers who hits that elderly couple and then it turns into this big deal because the police are called insurance is called mm -hmm. and they make it seem like it's a real accident and of course belittling the elderly couple one thing that i thought was really funny about this little movie is this whole thing on ageism but everyone's old yeah, well, I think in the introduction they described that they use this community home of, right of, of these old people and this is the best this is the best time they have filming this in years. <laughs> right, but it's just funny to see all these like old people treating other old people like they're too old. But mm -hmm. it's like everyone in this thing is old. <laughs> and then there's a really weird scene where they're trying to... Senior citizens preferred here or whatever. They're trying to like... Like segregation, segregate. Jim Crow type. <laughs> then there's a psychic at the amusement mm -hmm. park, Carnival, who um, ends up showing them 
like life outside. So we get a depiction of like a slum lord and how the yes. slum lord doesn't want to fix up anyone's housing. There's also something that I thought was we see I think three times like a random passenger like like in a mm, roller coaster or in the crowd wearing like a monster mask. Yeah. Uh, which I didn't understand what that was. I think to do. that Romero was commissioned to do this and found loopholes to to have Throw his own, his own to, shit in to, there. to make it interesting for himself as a filmmaker, perhaps. The final scene before we get snapped back into like the PSA, like like the way the film begins is how it ends with the man talking. But before that happens, we see Lincoln all beat up, and then he goes to sit down and like read to some little girl, which I thought was so creepy. Um, yes, um, and and get called away. It, it also the point where he needs a band aid on his head. Yeah. Where, Okay, so this was commissioned by the Lutheran Society to bring awareness to these issues. So I think it's so funny that this film, first of all, is quite long. So I don't know what he thought or where the, he thought they would show this. But also in this like PSA, there's no actual instruction. Like usually in videos like this, even if he wants to make it weird, there's usually narration about like, okay, this is what we're like, this is what we just saw. This is why this is wrong. But the way this film is done, like the way the story is told... You could almost make an argument for why, like, old people are annoying or something. <laughs> so I don't think it's effective well, for what it was commissioned for. No, like, the, it's presented in such an abstract way. It's really presenting its audience who would be ever watching this in an educational setting to do a lot of heavy lifting. Yes. Um, okay. Lastly, my last note is, uh, or <laughs> lastly, my last note, finally, is that um, it felt long. It does feel a little long. Yeah. Um, it feels like a Twilight Zone episode of Adventureland. But just a little too long. Um, or it also feels like something you would have... The Arrow video has been putting out... I think they only have two volumes of the American Horror Anthologies where they've... That's where we reviewed Toys Are Not For Children out of there, which some of these oh. weird, obscure, forgotten American indie horror films. This seems like something that would be an extra feature on one of those. Um, I think if you're a fan of Romero... Uh, Could you describe what he's done? Well, Night of the Living Dead was his first film okay. in 1968. What would people know him from? Night of the Living Dead, uh, Dawn of the Dead. Um, my f personal favorites are kind of his non-zombie movies, because I'm, I think I'm just tired of zombies. Um, Creep, Creep Show is my favorite. Okay. Uh, Monkey Shines. The Creep Show with um, just based Adrian on Barbeau. And yeah, Stephen. That's Cage. him. Yeah, he directed that. All of them. Not the second film, I don't believe, just the first Creepshow. But show. all the sequences in the first yeah. one? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I love Creepshow. Um, Monkey Shines. Monkey Shines, Martin, uh, of course. Uh, I don't really care for The Crazies, which has been remade. Uh, the Dark Half, a Stephen King adaptation he did uh, with Timothy Hutton uh, and Amy Madigan, I, I kind of liked as well. Um, but going back to his filmography in preparation for this, he directed a TV documentary in the 70s called O.J. Simpson, Juice on the Loose. Which I would be. Oh, I'm would, very curious about that. <laughs> I would love to see. Uh, which also had the same cinematographer as this, S. William Hinsman, uh, who played a zombie in uh, Night of the Living Dead. I would recommend this to someone who is a fan of George A. Romero. Yeah, for sure. Because it's you know it's fun to see your fave like do some a weird off thing, but I didn't necessarily enjoy this like as a, like a singular viewing experience because I'm not super familiar with his work, I guess, or I didn't know I was until you just said it, but. Um, yeah, I don't know who would, like, like under what circumstances that I would say. I think aficionados of Romero yeah. or indie American horror film from the 70s. It definitely has that vibe that you might dig from that era of filmmaking. But uh, Do you have anything else? No. What would you give it? Uh, three out of five. It's worth a watch. I would give it two and a half. Okay. Because, I, I mean, I'm here, like, Yeah. It, there's an audience for it somewhere. Sure. Oh, but what I did want to say is I would love to know more about the Lutheran Society. Oh, I would I would love to know what they thought when yeah. they received this. Like, was this... <laughs> or did they just kind of take it and say thanks and put it on the shelf? Because I'm imagining it's maybe like a religious-based thing and maybe they were thinking they were going to show it to like their um, congregation, like the young people. And then they saw it like, we cannot Yeah, I just show <laughs> imagine like a bunch of Midwestern churchgoers watching this and being like, oh. Anyway, toodaloo. Bye.